everybody, my name is Jenna Walker. I'm a former graduate of CUNY Medgar Evers College in Brooklyn, New York, earning my Bachelor's of Science in Mathematics with a minor in Environmental Science. My specific research this summer is using Fourier analysis on server web logs to detect low observable cybersecurity threats. What we are trying to do, and specifically in mine, is pick out these web logs run a Fourier analysis, this is just making a complex waveform into a series of simple sinusoidal forms, cosines and sines, and after we pick these out, we get the frequencies, and from those frequencies, we plug it into the k-means clustering. This is where we group um, normal activities, and from this, we can pick out abnormal activities. It's before the bad guys actually get inside the intranet of whichever um, department or organization you are working for. This is important to me because working on such a hard research project makes you feel important. But not only makes you feel important, it makes you feel that you are doing something good, not only for the lab, but for the nation as a whole. I'm John, John Rodman, and I'm a rising junior at Syracuse University, and I'm in the Suli program. And this summer I'm working with the Nuclear Science and Technology Department and doing some work with their data here. So what they're doing at NSLS2 is using the various x-ray techniques to characterize these irradiated materials to sort of get a better idea of what's happening in these steels over the course of a lifetime in a reactor. So as a thing gets more irradiated, then there are going to be changes. And what we're trying to do is look more closely at what those changes are. And, uh, getting to go to NSLS2 is really cool because I get to work on this, like, very high-tech, very advanced, like, data taking and all that stuff. It's just really cool to see. You really feel like you're getting to do something that's actually going to be useful and not just going to be put out into a paper that somebody might reference 30 years from now, maybe. Like, these are, like, pretty, like, high-impact stuff that's used there. It's pretty immediately applicable. Hi, my name is Tunisia Solomon. I attend SUNY Farmingdale. I am part of the SULI program. This summer, I am working on combining microscopic images on a common coordinate system with Randy Smith. Right now, we are figuring out how to convert lab microscope images to um, have a common coordinate system with the beam line. So these images are of polymer beads. I took them in the lab microscope, and I formatted them and uploaded them into my code so that they would eventually depict what the entire sample image is. This is the sample, and you can see the outline of the polymer beads. This is going to help a researcher because it will allow for them to see their entire sample in a zoomed out view so they can see the entire sample just on one coordinate system. So it's a wonderful opportunity to be at BNL through the SULI program. I have met so many amazing scientists, so many amazing researchers and students, and um, I've learned so much by my mentor and just. Um, just doing the work that I'm doing. It's been great. Settle in, everybody. It's story time. There's a princess in a tower. Oh my gosh, that's just like me. Poor Rapunzel needs a haircut, but the witch won't set her free. I had a thought, dear, however scary, about that night the bug Your faith is strong I can only fall short for so long down the road later on you will hate that I <laughs> My name is Kristen O'Corn. I go to Stevens Institute of Technology and I'm studying mechanical engineering. 
this device here we're using to classify the emissions of the wood burning stove here. So we have the emissions coming out of our dilution tunnel here and then they're flowing into this machine where we have these two concentric cylinders that are rotating which creates a centrifugal force on the particles. And then there's also an electric potential so there's an electrostatic force on each of the particles that enter. So the particles that pass through are counted and then we're able to determine the concentration of particles of that certain size that are coming from emissions at that point in time. It's brand new here at Brookhaven. It's the first one we've ever had here. This is really the first time we're using it for any experiment. So it's really cool that as an intern, I was able to come here and use this brand new machinery and be the first one here to learn how to use it. As a matter of fact, I have to basically show everyone else how to use it before I leave here. My name's Dan Wines. I'm in the SULI program. I just graduated from Fordham University and uh, I'm working under Trevaney Rao in the instrumentation division. I worked on research involving the fabrication of photocathode materials. These photocathodes are coated with a photoemissive material and when struck by a laser, uh, beams of electrons are emitted. Currently the photocathodes are being tested in the electron guns in the RIC tunnel. Currently we are using sources that contain sodium, potassium, and antimony because the sodium, potassium, antimonide photocathodes are very durable at high temperatures. It feels good to know that the work I've done here will help scientists in the future with their research at RIC. I'll be starting my PhD at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County in Physics next month. My name is Shema Khatib and I'm an assistant professor in Texas Tech University in the Department of Chemical Engineering. I'm here with the visiting faculty program and with me I have two students from Texas Tech uh, that are Jim Tata and Leah Harper. So uh, what we're doing right now, we're studying this catalytic process that converts methane into added value products. So the process that we're looking at is um, is really exciting because it allows us with a catalyst to convert methane in one step into benzene and hydrogen which are both chemical commodities and this overcomes all the transportation issue because if this catalyst works well we can build our chemical plant right at the source of natural gas right at the wellhead I think that this is a great opportunity, not just for me to come and use these advanced equipment that we have access to in this national lab setting, but also for my students to be exposed to the national lab and the scientists that we have here, and then also for them to have fun with the other interns and just enjoy a summer where they, have, where they work hard and they also play hard. So my name is uh, Moses Heimbondi and I am an associate professor of mathematics at Lincoln University in Pennsylvania. I am currently this summer here under the visiting uh, faculty program of the Department of Energy to do density functional theory on copper indium selenium clusters. And then long term is to try and synthesize these nanoclusters if they are stable under simulations, synthesize them in the lab and then use them for photovoltaics. If we can, uh, for example, come up with a, a, a paint that, in, that has all these uh, nanoparticles of the uh, sort of like uh, the, 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 the photovoltaic particles in it and then just paint that on the roof instead of installing panels, that is also easier. 
I think, I mean, you know, instead of putting all these bulky stuff on the roof, just take a, a can of paint or a, um, a, you know, a bucket of paint and then just paint that over your roof and voila, you have, uh, you know, your roof generating your electricity. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> Hi, um, my name is Claire O'Kane. I go to Cornell University. I'm in the Suli program and I'm doing pollinator research. And so we've been trying to see if there have been trends between what bees are found where and what wildflowers they prefer. They have preferences in what type of wildflower and what, what bees we find here in the first place and what kind of conditions they like to be out and foraging. The data that we take down are the species of pollinator. This could be bumblebees, hon honeybees, or other native bees. And the species of wildflower that we find them pollinating on. So crown vetch, blue vervain, a lot of non-native plants, surprisingly. What you find here is a bumblebee foraging on a crown vetch wildflower that we would collect from the flower with our nets and put in a vial. And then when we release them, they fly right back to the flower. Luckily, none of us have been stung at all this summer. I study environmental science at my school, and I'm very interested in conservation in particular. So I find this a very important issue to study. And we all love being outside and being able to do what we can to help the environment. Hi, my name is Deidre Hodges and I work at the University of Texas in El Paso. I'm here with the NSF LSAMP program this summer. The highlight of my summer this summer was working uh, fabricating cadmium zinc telluride radiation detectors as well as working in the Center for Functional Nanomaterials, characterizing the perovskite solar cells using photoluminescence and XPS. I think it was a tremendous, a great opportunity, invaluable. Um, for me, life-changing, and I know for my students, life-changing. I've learned things here that I would not have learned in the classroom and in my lab back at my home institution. I've grown tremendously as a researcher, my students have grown tremendously here, and we will bring this knowledge and this experience back to our lab and our home institution, and we look forward to returning. <laughs>